Hello and assalamu alaikum everyone. I am Kashif Kamran and a very warm welcome to the AAA orientation for the international stream for December 2024 and March 2025 exams. At the very start of this orientation, I would first like to introduce myself as a tutor. I am Kashif Kamran, a fellow Chartered Certified Accountant, and I do have a certificate in international auditing and a CA finalist from the Institute of Chartered Accountant of Pakistan. In terms of my experience, it's been more than 17 years since I am teaching the ACCA qualification and my course specialization is in the AA, AAA and the SPL paper. Uh, I'm also a registered mentor for Oxford Brooks University. In terms of my achievement, my pass rates for AAA are above global averages in each exam setting. I've conducted 13 ACCA Pakistan AAA webinars, which is the highest by any teacher. And since then, I am now conducting my own webinars, and it's been last four years since I'm conducting my own webinars, known as Webinars to Success Before Exams. In terms of my affiliation, I had my own setup, which is Kashif Kamran's Digital Learning, also known as KKDL. I am also connected with PAC College in Lahore, Pakistan, which is a gold approved learning provider for ACCA. And I'm also connected with Zivit College in India. Now with that tutor profile, let's open up the orientation for AAA. Let's first do a quick understanding of the AAA paper. All you need to know about the AAA paper. First of all, in terms of the brought forward knowledge, there are two preceding exams which will be helping you in the AAA. Number one, the AA, and number two, the SPR. Now, a lot of times the student asks me that if we are exempted from AA, can we still do AAA? And my answer to those students is yes. Uh, in my last so many years of digital teaching. Uh, I think it's been five years since I am teaching digitally. Uh, I've got so many students uh, who had exemptions in AA and had passed AAA in the first attempt because my AAA course uh, covers every technical aspect. So if you have zero knowledge of AA, you will still gain knowledge which you need to pass the AAA exam. So you should not be worried about. Yes, if any student has done AA, uh, you, have, you have a double advantage because you might be understanding something more quicker than a student who were exempted. But still, the course is so uh, rigorously defined that even a student with exemption from AA has proven excellence in my course. SPR. No question about it. SVR is a very, very important area. And there is a block three in my syllabus. And that block three needs an accounting knowledge. You should all be very well versed with accounting knowledge. Any student who has given SPR before AAA or with AAA, you are in an ideal position. The gap between SPR and AAA should be less because you then had no need to revise the accounting standards. But if the gap is uh, like six months, nine months, a year ago, you've given SPR and you're giving, you're giving AAA in December or March and you've given SPR a year ago, you might have faded down with some of the accounting standards and you might need to revise them. But yes, if a student has just given SPR three months ago or is awaiting results or is giving SPR with AAA in December 24 or March 25, you are in an ideal position. And I will be guiding you about how you should be revising your accounting standards. And I've already already given that in my block three orientation. So when once you go to the block three and you will watch my orientation for block three, I have given you a whole emphasis about how would you need to revise your accounting standard. But you all need to do your self-evaluation for SBR. Where are you standing in terms of your SBR knowledge? Uh, is it up to date? Have you given SBR three months ago, six months ago, nine months ago, or a year ago, or more than that? So that will determine the need to revise the accounting standard. Not every student needs to revise the accounting standard, but yes, uh, if the gap is significant, 
you need to revise it. So when, when you start the block three, uh, there is an orientation for block three already uploaded. You will watch that orientation, which will give you the guidance about from where can you revise the accounting knowledge. But SVR is an important prerequisite for the AAA paper and all accounting standards covered in SVR are part and parcel of the AAA syllabus. So this is the brought forward knowledge and a perspective on that. Now, moving towards the syllabus, if you look at the syllabus areas for AAA, there are seven syllabus areas on your screen from A to G. Syllabus area A is regulatory environment. B is ethical and professional issues. C is practice management and quality management. D is planning and the audit of the historical financial statement. E is completion and reporting. F is other assignments and G is current issue. I will be guiding you about how are they tested and which of the syllabus area is more important among the seven syllabus areas in front of your screen. And more importantly, you should also realize that this whole syllabus is covered in my online course. So you will have all the technical knowledge from A to G. Nothing will be omitted or skipped in my lectures. From the syllabus, the paper format. There are two sections in the AAA paper. Section A consists of a question number one. In that question number one, you have 40 technical marks and 10 professional marks. So the accumulation is 50 marks. In the section B, you have question two and question three. Each have 20 technical marks and five professional marks. So that means each question in section B is worth 25 marks. So a pretty simple paper. Three questions you need to attempt one in section A and two in section B. We'll see the time management. We'll see how the syllabus, the seven syllabus areas connect with section A and section B because that will give you a more holistic idea of how you will be preparing yourself in terms of the syllabus. Now, this is the most important thing I am discussing with you in my orientation because this is a particular slide which will connect the syllabus with the paper format and the time management. Because time management is the most important challenge in the AAA paper. And a lot of time the students struggle to complete the paper in time. So what is the time management? Uh, what comes in question one? What comes in question two? What comes in question three? Uh, how the syllabus connects with uh, question one, two and three? All sort of those questions will now be addressed. So listen to this very carefully. If you look at this pie chart, this pie chart defines section A and section B left and right, each having a 50% weightage. Question number one is 50 marks and question two and three together is 50 marks. So both having an equal weight. Let's first open the section A on the left hand side. Section A consists of the question number one because it's half of the total paper, half of the 100 marks. So you have 195 minutes of the total exam time. So from that 195 minutes of the total exam time, you will take exactly half the time into the question number one. So half of 195 is 97.5 minutes, which will go to the question number one for 50 marks. And you will try to do your best within this time in 97.5 minutes. Now, remember, in this 97.5 minutes, you can take out your calculator. One fourth of the time is for reading and planning the question number one. And of this 97.5 minutes, three fourth is for writing. Now, this is the rule of thumb. Every time you see the total time for a question, from that total time, one fourth is to read and plan. Three fourth is to write. Now, whenever you do practice at home, please ensure you follow this time zones. One fourth for reading and planning, three fourth for writing. Whatever question you are doing at home, for example, you're doing a question at home for 10 marks, you know that, that you total have 195 minutes. So 195 minutes divided by 100 means you have 1.95 minutes per mark. So if you're doing a 10 marks question at home, so you multiply this by 1.95, so you get approximately 20 minutes. 
of that 20 minutes, one fourth is to read and plan, three fourth is to write. If you do it from the very start, you will not struggle on the day of exam and you will have a very good looking time management implementation in the real exam in December 24 or March 25. So half the paper is question one and half the time is given to question number one, 97.5 minutes. Now, more importantly, syllabus area D, planning and the audit of historical financial statement is the mandatory area which comes in question number one. You will never find a question one without syllabus area D because question number one is set at the stage of planning. So syllabus area D is tested in question number one and it's the heavy weight of question number one. If you look at the 40 technical marks in question number one, of those 40 technical marks at times syllabus area D is up to 25 marks. Imagine. Of the 40 technical marks, syllabus area D can touch 25 marks of 40. So syllabus area D is the mainstay of the question number one because it's set at the planning stage. So syllabus area D is the most important one, right? Number one, mandatory and will be tested only in question number one. You will not find syllabus area D being tested in section B of the paper, never. It's only tested in section A because section A is set at the stage of planning. So of the seven syllabus area, D is important. Question two and question three in the section B, each of 25 marks. You have another 97.5 minutes uh, for section B because you have total 50 marks just like the section A. Now you have two questions, question two and question three. So you will divide the 97.5 minutes into question two and question three. And this is how it should look like. For question two, uh, for 25 marks, you will have 48.75 minutes. And for the question three, for another 25 marks, you will have another 48.75 minutes to wrap it up. Again, within the 48.75 minutes, one fourth is to read and plan, three fourth is to write. Now, what comes in section B, what comes in question two and what comes in question three is, is there any uh, ideal definition of that? And the answer is yes. Syllabus area E will only be tested in section B, completion and reporting. So syllabus area E will only be tested in section B, never will be tested in section A, never. Just like syllabus area D, will always be tested in section A, never in section B. So syllabus area E is important. Now, one of the question, one of the question, two or three, will be from syllabus area E. Syllabus area E, just like syllabus area D is mandatory, will never be skipped, will never be skipped. So one of the two questions in section B, one of them has to be from completion and reporting. So you need to be very strong in completion and reporting, just like you need to be very strong in syllabus area D because it's mandatory, never, never will be omitted. Mandatory in one of the section B question. That is what I was emphasizing. Next, syllabus area F, other assignments, will only be tested in section B. It will not come in section A, never. So some of the syllabus areas are like blocked. Syllabus area D is blocked in section A. Syllabus area E and F is blocked in section B. They will not swipe their positions, never. But syllabus area E is important because one of the question has to be from syllabus area E. It's mandatory. But syllabus area F is important because it can only come in section B, but does it come in every single exam setting? Let's find the answer. The answer to that is frequently tested in one of the section B question. It's not saying mandatory, it's saying frequently. So frequently means it could be uh, three out of five exam settings. It could be four out of five exam settings, but it could not be five out of five exam settings. Syllabus area E is five out of five. Syllabus area D is 5 out of 5. Syllabus area F is 3 out of 5. At times, 4 out of 5. 
frequently tested, but it's not every time. Be, be very clear. But I hope you understand the importance of syllabus area F and you understand the importance of syllabus area E and D. So you have seven syllabus areas of them. D, E and F are very important. Is everyone clear so far, so forth before I unfold the syllabus area A, B, C and G? Is everyone clear with D, E and F and how will they be tested? Is everyone sound with it? Okay, now remember which two syllabus areas are mandatory, which you will find in every exam paper, which two are mandatory? Syllabus area D and E are mandatory. Uh, what about F? Is F mandatory? No, F is frequently asked. Can you uh, skip F? Uh, can you be unprepared on F? Never. F is important, right? F is important. Okay, now moving on. What about ABC? Let's see ABC. Syllabus area at the bottom of my presentation, you can now see ABC can be tested anywhere in the paper. They're flexible. So I call D, E, F fixed. They cannot change. ABC is flexible. It could be in A, it could be in B. And in one exam setting, you can find them in A as well as B. So examiner can use ABC uh, as they want to. Uh, very flexible with ABC. You find ABC in section A as well. You find ABC in section B as well. So they can be anywhere in the paper. So once you do uh, past paper practice, you will find variety of questions even in section A and B from ABC. So they're flexible areas. Syllabus area G, current issue, only when an article is published. Current issue is not examined in every single exam setting of AAA. If I give you last five years, last five year analysis of AAA, uh, I think hardly three times in the last five years, current issues are examined. Five years, each year we have four exam settings. We have four exam settings in each year. I'm talking about last five years. Only three times in the last five years, the current issues have come. So current issues, not like something regular, will come in every single exam setting. So you should not be bothered about it. You can only prepare if there is a current issue. And I tell you there is a current issue. Already there is one uh, on the portal, uh, which you can prepare for. But if there is any important current issue for your December 24 exams or March 25 exams, I will be guiding you if there is any. But currently, you should focus on preparing how many syllabus areas? You should focus on preparing six syllabus areas, not seven. A, B, C, D, E, F. You should not be bothered about G. If there is any current issue, if there is something to be learned for uh, your December 24 exams, you can do that in last two days even, last three days even, because current issue just need like one hour. And in one hour, you are done ready with current issue. So you're not bothered about current issue at this point in time. Is everyone clear with this analysis? Uh, is this an effective analysis? Question one, question two, question three. Can, can you just see a summary of AAA in one presentation slide? Please ensure you take a printout of this presentation slide. Keep it on your table. Paste it on your table, uh, keep it somewhere where you study and just keep looking at it every after every one week that, to know how you're progressing. I think this this particular presentation slide will be very important and will give you the confidence how you are approaching the AAA for December 24 and March 25. Okay, now just move moving on from this discussion of the paper format and syllabus and time management. Let's look at the section A analysis. Section A is the question number one for 50 marks. Let's do a more broad spectrum analysis. <laughs> Overview of section A. Consist, uh, section A consists of a 50 marks question of which 40 are technical marks and 10 are professional marks. The bulk of the 40 technical marks are utilized for risk assessment, either business risk 
audit risk or risk of material misstatement. You will be learning all this in block three, which is a mandatory part of the question number one. So risk is a mandatory part of the question number one. That is a syllabus area D. And you will be learning all about that in my block three. Uh, moreover, the other examinable topics in question number one more frequently asked for includes ethical issues, that syllabus area B, matters in planning the first year audit, that is syllabus area D, evaluating the component auditor strategy, that is syllabus area D, matters in accepting the new client or an additional engagement from an existing client, that is a syllabus area C, audit procedure is a syllabus area D, knowledge areas like money laundering, responsibility for laws and regulations, using the work of others or joint audit is syllabus area A. So that's how it goes down, right? So lots of topics can come from syllabus area A, B, C in question number one, but the dominating part of the question number one is syllabus area D, which is basically risk. And risk will be 50% or more than 50% of your total worth of question number one. So once you start your syllabus, keep this uh, presentation with you and ensure that whichever topic you are doing, where and how will it be examined? So this is an overview of the section A of the paper. Section B of the paper. Section B consists of two questions, each of 25 marks, which includes 20 technical and five professional marks. One of them is set at the completion and reporting stage, syllabus area E, this is a must, and I just mentioned that, right? So syllabus area E, just like syllabus area D, is a mandatory question in the AAA paper. The question at completion and reporting stage can not, can not just purely be a reporting question, it could include elements of completion stage activities as well. So a lot of time the student think a completion and reporting question is just like an audit report question, not necessarily. It's completion and reporting. So at times the question uh, is more dominant on the completion side and less dominant on the reporting side. Or at times it's a complete reporting question. So it could be any way in the paper, but you have to be very strong on completion and reporting once you do my block three of the syllabus. Student normally assume this question uh, to be purely based on the audit report knowledge. That is not the case. It is a blend of completion and reporting. This question is set at the completion stage and examiner mentioned in the opening paragraph of the case, uh, the audit report is to be signed next week. So most of the time when you see one of the section B question and you read the opening paragraph, of one of the section B question, it will tell you audit is nearing completion and you will pick, pick it out. This is the completion stage question or the examiner will tell you audit report is to be signed next week. Now such statements help you pick. This is a completion and a reporting stage question. Or the manager is performing a review of the working paper uh, or an engagement quality review is being performed uh, as an indication that this is a completion stage question. So look at the last bullet. It is giving you some examples, uh, which comes in the opening paragraph of a section B question. And if you see such statements in an opening paragraph of a section B question, you will easily pick it out. This is the completion and a reporting stage question. But again, once you start the syllabus, particularly once you go to the syllabus area uh, D and E, uh, which is in the block three, you will realize that in the opening paragraph, you do get such sentences once you start doing the past paper practice. I hope these presentation slides will be helping you uh, once you start rolling the course and once you start practicing the past papers, because a lot of important information is given to you in this presentation slide. Moreover, if you look at the completion and reporting stage, which is syllabus area E, what sort of topics are included in completion and reporting stage, which you will be learning in my block three? The question at completion stage uh, test topics as follow. Number one, evaluating the accounting matters uh, and explaining the evidence in the working paper file. So you need to have a good accounting knowledge. Number two, evaluating the sufficiency and appropriateness of the evidence gathered by the audit team, recommending further procedures and actions. Number three, evaluating the going concern matters, 
procedures on going concern or evidence on a cash flow forecast. Now, these are topics which are covered in my course. You just need to ensure that by the end of the course, you tick one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that I've done it. Number four, evaluating the matters to be communicated to those charged with governance. Number five, evaluating the accounting treatment and the implication of the uncorrected accounting treatment on the audit report. Number six, a critical appraisal of the audit report. You should know the audit report very well because the examiner might ask you to critically appraise the report by giving you lots of weaknesses in the audit report. Number seven, auditor responsibility for other information in the annual report and how the auditor address the responsibility for other information. Now, these are topics which have been well discussed in my block three. You just need to ensure that you take them up once you have completed them. So you're assured that I know the syllabus area E very well. Okay, further in terms of section B, the other question in section B is open. And any syllabus area from A, B, C, or F can be examined here. D and E can't be examined as they have already been examined. So D has come in question number one. E has come in one of the question of section B. Now, one of the question in section B, either two or three is open. Examiner can test in that open question A, B, C, or can test F. We know F is frequently examined. Four out of five exam setting, you find F. So most of the time you will find F in one of the question in section B, but if F is not coming, then it could be ABC. And in that even C is very important. Quality management is very important. Mostly, uh, most frequently asked question in section B beside uh, completion and reporting. Number one is evaluating the quality management, professional and ethical. This is most favorite area of examiner. And in the last uh, one and a half years or two years, perhaps, this is the most favorite topic which is coming in section B. Mark my words. Number two, question on other assignments, which is syllabus area F. Number three, money laundering, which is syllabus area A. So I've given you some glimpse of things which comes in section B apart from syllabus area E. So is everyone clear with A and B? Is everyone clear how things can come into your paper? Uh, what comes more oftenly, what is mandatory, and what comes rarely. I hope this will all be helpful once you sit down, study, and approach your exams for December 24 or March 25. Now, moving away from the overview of the Section A and Section B, let's indulge into the pass rates analysis. AAA is an optional paper, right? And you all opted for it. Uh, you all opted for it. Uh, you must have some sound basis why you opted for AAA. No one forced you to opt for AAA because you had a choice among APM, AFM, ATX, and AAA to choose two. You choose AAA as one of the four papers. So if you have chosen this paper, you need to take responsibility that you will do excellence because something you take on your choice and on your free will, you need to perform very well. And that's my expectation from all of you. Let's look at the pass rate analysis and see what can we do to improve it. And remember, my passing rates are beyond the global averages, which you will look now. On average, in each session, my passing rate is 66% on the downside to a higher side of 72%. AAA pass rates versus all optional papers. Look at the optional papers on your screen, APM, ADX, AFM, and AAA. The yellow, yellow is my paper. The yellow is the AAA paper. And I, you can see the pass rates for AAA given. 34% in June 23, similar in September 23, similar in December 23, but then all of a sudden things started to change. 38%, almost touching near the 40 barrier, in March 24, and almost very identical in June 24, that is 37 percent. So uh, very uh, close by passing rates for AAA. Uh, though in the last two settings, you see the passing rates have surged uh, and have surged to 38 and 37. 
that should give you some sort of a positivity that the passing rates have started to improve and are becoming more closer to 40 barrier. But when you compare these passing rates with particularly the AFM and ATX, you can see the bars of AFM and ATX being higher. The only paper which is competing at the same level uh, with AAA is the APM paper. APM has very identical pass rates to AAA and is considered as the second most toughest paper beside AAA exams. AFM and ATX are the other optional papers where student takes a lot of interest, particularly in AFM. Most of the time I, I see students taking AFM and AAA, that's, that's the most common optional papers the students are, are opting for. So AAA has challenges, but AAA is a doable paper. You need the right approach. You need the right study planner. You need to follow the instruction of your tutor. You need to devise a right timetable and then start building confidence in AAA. AAA is doable. 66% to 72% of my students pass in one single exam setting. So believe in yourself, right? You opted for this paper and you can do the best. Let's see what are some under, underlying challenges in the AAA uh, and why students fail so much in the AAA paper. Because you should be knowing it from the very day one when you're starting to prepare for December 24 and March 25 exams. Why students fail? I tried investigating uh, the recent examiner report, the June 24 examiner report, and I tried finding reasons why students fail the AAA paper. And this is a summary from the examiner report, why students fail. Number one, generic responses. If you try to write a generic answer in AAA, uh, which is uh, more of knowledge, more of knowledge coming from ACCS Study Hub or a BPB book or a Kaplan book, Knowledge alone will not make you pass the AAA paper. It's more about tailoring. It's more about uh, modifying your knowledge in the context of the case study. Understand that AAA is a case study exam. So when there is a case study, you need to read it out. You need to link your answer to the case study. Then only you will pass. But if you are ignoring the case study, and you are producing the knowledge which you got from my lectures, from ACCS Study Hub, from BPP or Kaplan books, you're failing. Number two, insufficient application of knowledge. You're not applying knowledge well. Your knowledge is weak. A lot of time, the students who fail in 30s, that means you, you, ha you don't have the right knowledge for AAA. The student who fails in 40s, you're lacking practice. So anytime a student comes to me and say, I, I failed in 30s, I, I tell him that you need to take a full course because you have insufficient knowledge. Knowledge is important and you will be getting that knowledge in my syllabus areas, A, B, C, D, E, F, G over the, over the course. But the important thing is you apply the knowledge in the right context on the day of exam. And what is the right knowledge? The one which is adapted to the case study the one which is modified to the case study. And this knowledge includes the accounting knowledge, which is the most important knowledge in the AAA paper. Lack of understanding of key concepts. The student don't understand the key concepts. Uh, throughout my course, you need to take summaries. You need to take summaries of the key concepts. So wherever I discuss a key concept like materiality, like going concern, uh, you need to note them down. Throughout my course, I will be giving you some key pointers uh, emphasizable parts, note them down. Take a summary of that because the key concepts will be helping you pass the paper. Poor analysis of risk. And you know, risk is 50% of the question number one. We just discussed that. Block three. And I have done so many lectures on risk to, get, to give you confidence and so much practice on risk to give you confidence once you start the block three, because risk is a critical part and the student generally perform uh, weak on the part of risk. So risk is an area where you underperform and you fail. Inadequate planning and consideration of audit issues. You, you're not, some candidates do not consider the implication of the issue on audit planning 
particularly regarding management integrity and internal controls. The oversight can lead to incomplete or incorrect answer. That, that simply means that you are not connecting the problem in the scenario with the implication on the audit or you're not trying to build the implication towards client integrity. If there is any issue in the scenario which questions the client integrity, you should question the client integrity because that is something of, of a greater knowledge. So uh, what the examining team is trying to tell you in the point number five is that you, you have weak connections to the underlying problems in the scenario or you're not trying to build up the right implication of the problem for the audit process. Limited practice and review. Definitely students don't practice a lot and you will see that emphasis in my syllabus that I tell students to practice, practice, practice and practice a lot. Failure to demonstrate professional skills. Uh, right after my orientation, uh, you will see another video being uploaded on the portal, which will be demonstrating professional skills. And it will be just like a 45 minutes video max, which will just give you examples of how you can do excellence in 20 professional marks. So once you watch the orientation, uh, I think a few days later, you will watch another video under orientation that will be about professional marks. And that should ideally be watched uh, at the very start of your course or either when you're completing the course to have a very right perspective about how you can add value to the 20 professional marks in the AAA paper. So these are seven reasons. Uh, take a printout of this presentation, read through these seven reasons, particularly when you are 50% done with the syllabus. Probably you will not understand most of them, uh, most of them now, but when you're done 50% of the course, you will start understanding one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and try to ensure you are overcoming each one of them in a very effective manner. Okay, the most important thing for this orientation, how to use the course on portal. You have enrolled for my course, you have paid for my course, and you are having an access on my portal, which is lms.kashifkamran.com. How to use the course on that portal? Frequently asked questions on study resources, frequently asked questions on practice, assignments, and mock. So that all will be settled in this section of the orientation. Let's open up this very important section. Look at this. This is a screenshot of the portal of the LMS, the learning management system, where you have enrolled and you have got your username and password. And when you log into that portal, you see an interface which have technical content, practice and exam technique section, resource section, and ACCA mock. Just let me show you that. And I hope you all agree. This is exactly what you see when you log in. Is this the screen you see when you log in? In front of your screen now. Technical content, syllabus area A to G. Number two, practice and exam technique section. Number three, resource section. And number four, ACCA mock question paper and answer. Is this the interface you all are familiar with? Please respond to me. Right? So when you log in through your username and password, you come across this. So how many sections you can see on the top line? How many divisions can you see on the top line? Four, right? And under each, uh, we need to see what is uh, what is uh, important and how to do it. Okay, just let's go down back to my presentation and I've taken a screenshot of this and I've just posted it here. Look at the number one. Technical content. Triple A full course syllabus area A to G. So number one is the most important because number one is the video lectures. And that's the most important thing. Now, the video lectures are divided into block one, block two, block three, block four, and current issues. So when you open the technical content, do you all see block one, block two, block three, block four, current issues? Yes. Now, in block one, which is syllabus area A, if you can write, write down that specifically for all of you, This is syllabus area A basically. Block 
one. 10 lectures of 16.15 hours. Block two, which is syllabus area B and syllabus area C. 11 lectures of 20 hours. Block three, syllabus area D, you know how important that is, and syllabus area E, both are mandatory. One in question one, one in section B. And this is a block three where you need the accounting knowledge. Block one doesn't need accounting knowledge. Block two doesn't need accounting knowledge. Block four doesn't need accounting knowledge. Block three needs an accounting knowledge. And when you start block three, at the very start of block three, I've given an orientation. Every block has its own orientation now. So over the last one week, I have refined my uh, technical content. And for every block, I have given an individual orientation. So block one has an orientation, block two has an orientation, block three has an orientation, block four has an orientation. So that can guide you what to do and how to do. That is additional orientation, right? So block three is D and E, right? And it, this is the most important block because this is the block, this is the block which is the most important, right? Yes, uh, it could be overview or it could be orientation. It's one of the same thing, right? So when you open the block one or block two or block three or block four, you will find something known as overview or you will find something as orientation. So it's one of the same thing, right? So the terminologies can be different. I think it's an overview terminology, which has been used there, overview. Look at the block three. What I have done in block three is that in block three, I have broken the block three down into six areas now. Before, it used to be one block three, and all the lectures were in block three. So, student had no idea which topic is he or she covering. Now, just to ensure you have a very good idea of where you are going through in block three, I've divided block three into six sections. There's still block three. One section is planning and audit of financial statement. One section is audit risk and risk of material misstatement. One section is business risk. One section is procedures and evidence. One section is completion and reporting. And one section is group audit, ISA 600 revised. So six sections under block three. And every section has its overview and orientation. See, every section, you open the planning section. First, D, you get an overview. You open up the auditor's section, you get an overview. You open up the business risk, you get an overview. You open up the procedure, you get an overview. You open up the completion and reporting, you get an overview. I, I think the group audit doesn't have an overview because that's, that's just like a simplistic ISA 600 revised. The total number of hours you have in block three are 25 lectures with 43 hours. That's the heavy weight because that's the most important, uh, re most important impact on a 100 marks paper. You know, one question has to come from D, one question has to come from E. So that's the critical block. 25 lectures, 43 hours, but you can see the breakdown. Uh, every section breakdown has been given. I hope you can see the breakdown on the screen under block three, I'm not uh, repeating it. For every breakdown, I have given the total number of lectures and the lecture hours. So you can take a printout of this, keep it with you, and you can make a timetable so to know when to complete which lecture on a weekly basis. Block four has nine lectures of 18 hours and block four is an area which consists of F, syllabus area F. You know, syllabus area F was uh, important from section B point of view. So that's nine lectures for 18 hours and then current issue. The most updated current issue is given. Uh, if there is any change in the current issue for December 24 or March 25, I'll update you. But currently, the one on the portal, you should all be doing it. One lecture, one hour. So one hour is sufficient for current issues. Now, when you look at the portal and the technical content on the portal, there are 56 lectures of 98 hours. So now you need to make a timetable. Now, some of you might be a full-time student. Some of you might be doing jobs. Some might be doing multiple papers. How to fit it? Everyone needs to do your self-evaluation. I'll be giving you a timelines shortly. I will be giving you a timelines when, when to complete things up. But you are flexible to make your own timetables. 
you know your own challenges, you know your own constraints, you know your own obstacles. So please set your own timetables. Is everyone clear with the number one on your screen on the left hand side and the allocation of number one, 56 lectures and 98 hours? Is everyone clear with that breakdown? Have anyone visited uh, the portal in last 24 hours? Have you seen the breakdown of block three now? Uh, do you see block three divided into six sections? Right, so that's to give you more ease and a more better coverage of topics. Okay, now come to the number two. Look at the number two on your screen here. Number two. Number two is practice and exam technique section. Even though practice is included in the 56 lectures and 98 hours, you will get sufficient amount of practice within those 98 hours in the number one, but this is additional practice. Now I do webinars on a very regular basis and all my premium webinars are here on the portal. These are not the webinars which are on YouTube, right? Please come out of that mistake. These are not the webinars which you find on the YouTube. Those are public webinars. These are paid webinars which, uh, for which you have paid. These are exclusive webinars. Now, can you see the red and black division in number two? Can you see something has been highlighted in red and something has been highlighted in black in number two? All of you. In number two, can you see some boxes highlighted in red and some boxes highlighted in uh, black the ones in the red the one in the reds are must i'm not bothered about you do the blacks or you don't don't do the blacks because blacks are the mock exams of uh, of uh, each exam setting so it's not necessarily you do the mock exam because these are mock exams of the previous exam settings because i've already done them so i've uploaded them if you have time you can do the mock exams because it it is an additional practice but the one in red can you see the bottom of this one in the reds? Watch, watch the red ones. Watch the red ones. There are 28 lectures in the reds and there are 42 hours. Pure practice of recent paper. Pure practice of recent papers. A lot of times students ask me, do you do recent papers? Uh, a, 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 a admission query comes to me every time and asks me, have you done recent papers? 42 hours of recent papers. I've done September 22, I've done December 22, I've done March, June 23, I've done September, December 23, and even done the March, June 24. The March, June 24 has been done in uh, on the left-hand side. When you look at the 98 hours, the March, June 24 has been done in that side. So I've done all the latest five to six papers. So my course is up to date, right? Because a lot of times students ask me, is your course up to date? When have you recorded the lectures? Have you done the recent papers? I hope you must be uh, pretty sure the price you paid, you've paid the price for the right course. It's all up to date. It's all rigorous. It's all well developed. And to ensure that that is the reason my passing rate touches 72 version on the higher side and on the lower side, 66 version, because it's all an up to date course. So number two, uh, where will you be investing in number two? In only the reds. If you have time, go to the blacks. If you don't have time, just do the reds. Is that clear to all of you? Number three, resource section. So number three is all about resource. Now there is no Google Drive. There is no Google Drive, right? Right, so Google Drive is no more there, right? It's everything is on portal. I've added a resource section and under the resource section, you will see technical articles block wise. So wherever you need to read the technical article, go to the resource section under block one and a block two and a block three and a block four, you will find um, all of them. Uh, the summaries of the accounting standards, which uh, you need for block three, it is also given in the resource section. Uh, samples of the audit report, which you need for the block three, 
when you're doing the reporting stage is given in the resource section. Old past papers, the one which are not available on the ACCA practice platform. You know, ACCA practice platform has papers from 21, 21, 22, 23, 24. So if you want to do papers older than 21, which are important, which I have recommended, so where will you find those old papers? They're not on the ACC practice platform. You will find them in the old past paper section in the resource area. Examiner reports, ACCA answers to the latest papers. Latest papers from 21, 22, 23, 24. A lot of times the student asks me, do you have answers, ACC answers? Now this time I have downloaded and uploaded the answers on my resource section. So the resource section gives you everything and you know, you don't need to look left and right. Everything is here. Just go to the resource section. You will find everything. And finally, number fourth, ACCA mocks, question papers and answers. If anyone is interested to do a broader practice, and if anyone is interested to do the previous mock exams, because a mock exam, even the previous one is important because it's giving you a section A and section B. So if anyone wants to practice the previous mock exams, I have given all the mock question papers and their answers. So you can do them. This is extra if you have time. So the problem is the mock exam, which comes for September 24, will be deleted from the website of ACCA. So we know for every exam setting, a mock comes. So for December 24, a mock will come. For March 25, a mock will come. But that mock is deleted after the exams are over. So uh, what I have done is that I have at least uh, made a PDF file of all the mock exams before they got deleted from ACCA website. And I have put their answers too. So if anyone wants to do the previous mocks as an additional practice, you can do it. So all the mocks, question papers and answers are in number four. But number four is something additional. So not necessarily you do it. Only if you need it, you will do it, right? So this is something additional, right? This is something additional. Is everyone clear with the layout? I, I got some questions about the layout, so I'll just be answering them shortly. But is everyone clear with the layout? One, two, three, four. One consists of 56 lectures and 98 hours. Two consists of the webinars and mock debrief. You will only be watching the webinars, not the mock debrief. Save your time. Number three, resource section. Everything, every resource at one place. And number four is the previous mock question papers and answers. So this is how the portal has been re refined, removed, uh, made better. Uh, Vishal, I'll just be coming to your question shortly. I have taken notice of your question. Uh, I just mentioned uh, 10 minutes ago that after my orientation session uh, on the portal, you will see uh, another video for 45 minutes, which I will be doing over the next one week about professional marks. Uh, the previous professional marks videos, which I had on portal were outdated. So I removed them and I will be doing another uh, video on professional marks for 45 minutes, which gives you the new perspective on professional marks. So that is the reason you will not see any professional marks video, uh, which you must have saw earlier. Now, currently, the new portal has four sections, Vishal. And this is a new portal, right? Everything unnecessary has been removed. Anything old has been removed. Anything not, uh, not effectively contributing to your success in AAA has been removed. So I have only given you resources which are effective and can be used effectively. Is everyone clear with this? Yes, Vishal, so professional mark video will be a new one coming in the next one week and will be uploaded under the orientation. Right? Okay, now few more questions. Tutor resources. Each block, block one, block two, block three, block four, contains the tutor presentation notes because you know I, I teach through a presentation just like my orientation. So you will see my tutor presentation notes for every block. And tutor support file. Tutor support file is what? Whatever I write during my lecture on the screen. 
you know I write on a Word file during my lectures. So that is tutor support files, which is available for every section. You should download it, take a printout of it, and keep it on the table before you start watching a block. So if you're watching a block one, first download the presentation of block one, and first download the tutor support file of block one, keep it on the table, and start watching the lecture. When you're watching the lecture, if you want to take any extra note, scribble that on the printout you have taken. So by the end of watching lecture and the printouts you have on the table will become your notes, will become your summaries. Further, you will add on to these notes during watching lecture. And number three, moreover, the reading of the technical articles were recommended. So when you're watching my lecture and I recommend you to read an article, you will go to the resource section download the article, read it, and take notes of the article. So you are taking my tutor notes. You are watching the lecture. From watching the lecture, you're taking extra notes. Then you're reading an article. The article is adding to more notes. So see how refined notes can you make? Are you clear with how to go about using the tutor resource? Now, one good thing which I have done, uh, if anyone has seen my previous uh, portal, Every block will have only two files, one presentation, one tutor notes, not more than that. So I have accumulated all the files into one. So every block you open will have one tutor note and one presentation. Every block, one tutor note, one presentation. Everything has been accumulated in one file. So you just download it and take a print out of it. So even for the webinars, right, even for the webinars and the mock debrief, I have just made everything into one file. So you open up one section. In one section, you will only find one presentation and one tutor support file. So it's more easier for you. There will be no much documents in every section, which will waste your time. Is everyone clear with this? Okay, study planner. Since last 10 days, I'm getting questions. Sir, please share the study planner. This is a study planner. December 24 exams, students, you need to finish your course by 10th November, but again, you're flexible on that. Uh, this is my perspective. You need to look at your challenges. You need to look at your constraints and see when by when you can finish off. Uh, number one section on the portal, uh, which is the technical content, and number two, which is the practice content. You should finish that off by 10th. Post 10th, you can focus on intense practice of past papers. So you can do more practice or the practice which you not which you have not done till 10th. You can do the practice after 10th. Enjoy the AAA December 24 webinar with more practice and exam techniques, which will be uploaded on the portal 15 days before the exams. So this is for December 24 students, right? If you are a March 25 student, finish your course by 8th of Feb 2025. Post 8th of Feb, do intense past paper practice and enjoy the AAA March 25 webinar with more practice and exam techniques, which will be uploaded on the portal 15 days before the March 25 exams. Is everyone clear with this timeliners? Follow these timelines, but please ensure you are flexible to change it according to your own context. Adapt, adapt to your circumstances. This is just a tentative deadlines by which you should be finishing off. Is that clear to all of you? Okay, so you will only be doing the past papers available on the portal. You will be doing the past papers which are available on the resource section. No need to buy a kit. No need to buy a kit. Only the past papers are sufficient. Uh, book reading. I prefer if you want an extra knowledge, uh, go to the ACCA study hub and read the chapter. No need to get to the BPP and Kaplan. You can just go to the ACCA study hub and read the relevant chapter for any extra knowledge. But no need to buy the BPP and Kaplan books and no need to buy the kits. Past papers and ACCA study hub where needed. You're not reading the whole ACCA study hub because you have invested in my resources, right? But wherever you need an extra knowledge, you can go to the study hub and read it for 30, 40 minutes. 
But because you have invested in such a big course, there is no need for ACC study hub here. Okay. Some of the last things, mock submissions. A lot of times students ask us, me when to submit the mock. You will do your ACC at December 24 mock and the March 25 mock and submit for the tutor feedback and then watch the tutor mock debrief to analyze your issues. The mock debrief is published a week before the uh, actual exams. Uh, you will do your mock exam and submit to me for review. The last day to submit the mock for review for December 24 students is 23rd of November. And the last date for March 25 students to submit the mock is 20th of February. And my email ID where you can email me the mock exam and you can email me any past paper you do, any assignments you do. You know I check unlimited assignments. So you can just email me assignments at my email ID, which is triple A mock at the red gmail.com. That's an ID you will be using throughout the tenure of the course to email me any question you want me to check and review. But please ensure the deadlines to submit the answers and mocks is 23rd November for December 24 students and 20th of February for March 25 students. Please note these deadlines. Yes, that is the reason I'm doing one combined orientation for December 24 and March 25. And the question seems very irrelevant uh, that despite the fact I'm saying this is a December 24 and March 25 orientation, Denzel is asking me a question. Is, 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 is the course relevant for March 25? <laughs> it seems quite interesting. Uh, Denzel, I, I started my orientation that this is an orientation for December 24 and March 25. So definitely the course on the portal is all upgraded for December 24 and March 25. Okay, all the best for your exams. This is it for the orientation. Uh, if you believe there is any question which I have not addressed in the orientation, you now have an opportunity one by one to raise your questions and I'll be answering them. Uh, Vishal, no live classes. Uh, the any, any live classes you can expect is any new article coming in for December or March. So if any new article comes in or any new current issue comes in, so I'll be doing a live class on that. And the webinars uh, more likely are live, but uh, otherwise than that, there is no live classes, right? Uh, the doubts, you need to raise your doubts in the, in the WhatsApp group. I'm very active in the WhatsApp group, so you can raise your doubts in the WhatsApp group. Yes, it's perfectly okay to go in the sequence of the portal uh, and do uh, all the lectures first before you do the practice. Because number one is the con technical content, number two is the practice. But within the technical content, there are lots of practice. So please ensure you do the practice, which is within the technical content. And you can do the broader practice after the technical content is over. Yes, please, Kamran, have the printout of the presentation and the tutor notes before you start any block on your table. Uh, I have given you the stipulated time by when you should finish off the videos. 10th of November for uh, December 24 students and 8th of February for March 24 students. You need to email the mocks, right? No WhatsApp. Uh, Yusuf, I just made that clear, right? Uh, any question you do, any mock you do, you need to email me that, not WhatsApp me. Yes, the, the timeline for feedback on assignments is two working days, and I'll be starting to respond to assignments from tomorrow. So be assured that from tomorrow, the time limit for responding to assignments by me is two working days. Uh, Kamran, I just made clear, live classes uh, will only take place if there is any new current issue or any new article. Uh, apart from that, there will be no further live classes. Um, you can start the course in the order, block one, block two, block three, block four. Please don't change the order of the course. Yes, uh, you, can do, uh, you can do the technical content and practice simultaneously. Once you start the lectures, Fatima, it's very clearly given in every lecture what to do. So just follow the guidance and instruction of the tutor in, in the lectures. So some of the questions you're asking is something which are addressed in the lectures. So just watch the lectures and try to get over them. 
So is everyone fine? Everyone clear with this orientation? Uh, do you know uh, how would you reach the portal and how would you uh, utilize this portal? Uh, just giving you one more glimpse. Uh, you can see all the technical content orientation block one. Then you go, go down and you see the block two. Block three, the block three has been divided into six sections. Block three planning, block three audit risk, block three business risk, block three procedures, block three reporting, block three group audit, then block four and block five, uh, block four, sorry, and current issues. Then you see the practice and exam technique se sessions, resource section, and the mock questions. Uh, just one clarity, under every block, just like you open up the block one. So when you open up the block one, can you see the presentation and tutor support file right up front? Just two files under every block, rest is all the videos. So when you open up a block, you will find block one presentation, block one tutor support file. You close it and you open the block two. You open the block two, you will find block two tutor support file, block two presentation. So just two documents, making your life easier. Not many documents, right? One and two. Download them, take a printout. I hope you will thoroughly enjoy the portal with all the revision and everything done in. Yes, if anyone has done a SPR four years ago, three years ago, two years ago, please, when you start the block three, there is an orientation of block three. Watch that carefully and then do please re uh, revise your accounting standards. Kamran, accounting standards summaries are given in resource section. So you need to start revising it once you start the block three. Uh, Masoom Raza, uh, your query about the course on the Scriber Academy has been noted. And if you can just WhatsApp me after the class, I will be responding to you on clarity with that question. Yes, uh, first watch the practice videos before you start doing your own practice. So is everyone fine and clear with the orientation? I hope you effectively liked this orientation. Uh, I tried covering every possible things. And this will be uploaded in the next couple of hours on the portal. So you can enjoy uh, it and watch it again. And the presentation will also be uploaded. So you can download the presentation and, and take a printout because orientation has covered lots of important things which should be with you in a hard copy. Okay, all the best to all of you then. Um, I am signing off from this orientation for December 24 and March 25 exams. This is Kashif Kamran. Goodbye and Allah Hafiz.